Hi, my name is Debbie Rivers and I'm going to be on the online prosperity show and I'm going to be talking about how it's never too late to have the life and the love that you want. We're going to be talking about dating, relationships, confidence and why it's important to love yourself first. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Online Prosperity Show, the podcast that's dedicated to helping you achieve success in all areas of your life. I'm your host, Prosper Tarubinga, and today I have a very special guest joining us. Debbie, how are you doing today? I'm great. How are you? Fantastic. Thank you so much for your patience. Even though we've had a few technical glitches, I'm hoping we are going to be able to record this well. Now, Debbie Rivers is a renowned relationship expert who has been working with singles and couples for over a decade. Now, her passion lies in empowering people to be successful in love and having those transformative conversations that truly change lives. And Debbie firmly believes that it's never too late to have the life that you have imagined. So let's get ready to get into a deep dive uh, into this whole world of love, dating and relationships with the incredible Debbie Rivers. Now, Debbie, I mean, obviously um, you have been running this business and helping other people find love. Tell us a little bit about your story and how you actually got started, um, you know, as a relationship expert. Yep, sure. Like any good story, it starts with failure, right? <laughs> so I um, I don't know. I always dreamt of my own happy ever after. You know, I'd be married forever and it would work out. But I walked away from a 21-year-old marriage, right? And I felt like I failed at the one thing that I wanted. And it was, I don't know, it felt pretty devastating because you don't imagine that that's going to happen to you. And you know, I found myself in the situation, did I believe in love? Was it too late? Like, you know, and pretty cliched, I probably went on a journey to go find myself, didn't really want another relationship. And for some insane reason, for you know, I, I thought in the distance that I wanted to do it, but I wanted to travel. I wanted to do all the things you know, I met my ex-husband when I was 18, got married at 20. So I wanted to, you know, go do what I hadn't managed to do in 21 years. But I don't know, four years after I left my marriage, for some insane reason, I decided I'd start a speed dating business. So I don't know why. <laughs> I thought it was, it just seemed like I'd gone to one and it was fun. And I'm like, okay, you know, I can talk to people, have a glass of wine while I do it. It'd be a fun thing to do. But I didn't, didn't really think about how hard that would be and you know people had told me that they just you know my friends that were having difficulty being single they go I've just had somewhere to meet in the real world and I'm like oh I'll give them that but I found that you know it was one thing to meet people another thing to be successful right and what I saw people do is I saw them either not have the skills or fear would get in the way or they'd self-sabotage and I found myself doing the same things when I did date. So I kind of wanted to know why, how to overcome that, and how, you know, when I did find someone again, how I could have the skills to make a relationship work. So I went and trained and became a dating relationship coach, became a matchmaker too, but I don't do very much matchmaking. And, yeah, I, I love what I do. I love that it makes a real difference for people. Absolutely. I mean, in life, I predominantly think we're here to live, to learn and to contribute. And the best way to show your contribution is either through a family or a loved one or somebody that you can be with um, to share the rest of your life with, um, if that is sort of possible. Now, you mentioned that when you were going to these uh, events, a lot of people lacked the skill and maybe they had uh, what you term a fear of uh, maybe uh, connecting with people. Now, let's start with the skill first. What sort of skills does one need to go on a date? <laughs> well, I think it's the good old fashioned conversation skills, confidence. Like what I found is the most attractive is in any in, in men and women is confidence, right? And I would find the most successful people particularly men, were the ones that were confident. And they didn't have to be the best looking, but that confidence was what comes through. 
also the ability to be yourself and have a really good, interesting conversation because women tend to fall in love with their ears, right? <laughs> men more so with their eyes. So guys can do, men can go a long way by, you know, having that confidence and by being able to have a really good conversation. Absolutely. And that's maybe a skill that a lot of men need to have because uh, oh. if if that is the determinant of them getting into relationships and even in business, um, mm -hmm. you know, the way you construct your stories and the way people resonate with you actually makes sense. Now, you divorced, um, you know, after 21 years and then went on to start this whole uh, business about matchmaking and connecting other people. Would that have been a way of maybe getting yourself back into the dating pool again and you decided, wait a minute, I need to teach these people how to date me? <laughs> no. <laughs> In fact, I really, you know, people used to say, did you start the business to meet someone? It kind of makes you a bit undateable, right? <laughs> no, no one wants to date the dating coach. No one wants to, you know. Um, I, I Also, when I was dating, I'd have guys say, I don't want to date you. You're running singles events. You'll meet other people. So they kind of felt that, you know, it... it it wasn't safe, like I might cheat on them because I'm meeting too many people. So in some ways it, um, yeah, I definitely didn't do it for myself. Absolutely. <laughs> and what was what was it like when you were getting started in, in this whole setup? I mean, obviously society really has, um, you know, certain expectations as to what people should be and what sort of a business people should run. What, what sort of um, reactions did you get to people when you showed up and you're like, yeah, I'm the dating coach. <laughs> Yeah, really, uh, people go, well, what the hell, what is that? What do you do? Uh, oh, people would, it's a very interesting business. You know, I, I grew up and my parents always ran businesses, right? And I remember I didn't want what they had. I never imagined myself starting a business because they used to run, we, I, you know, in the UK, they used to run um, off licenses, delis, they work long hours. And I'm like, I never want that sort of business. I want a business that's fun, that makes a difference. And um, yeah, so yeah, interesting reaction from people to what I do. Absolutely. So having parents that would have been in business prior, would you have learned any sort of business ethics or traditional ways of doing business from them that you then passed on to your current business at the moment? I, I would say so. It, it was interesting. My parents, when they got out of running businesses, got government jobs. So they always told us growing up, you just need a good government job. So <laughs> that is what we, what we, what both my brother and myself did. But, you know, then have gone on to doing, you know, a business. And, yeah, seeing what they did, their hard work, the, the skills that it took. But, yeah, the business they ran and the business I run are completely different worlds. Absolutely. And one of the key principles that you emphasize, especially even on your website, is not waiting for things to be perfect before taking mm -hmm. any sort of action. Now, how has this mindset helped you in your own journey and how do you encourage your clients to adopt a similar approach? Yeah, absolutely. Look, when I started my business, I made the decision to do it within two months. And, and I think if I'd have you know, I just got a website, went out and, and and did what I needed to do. If I'd have thought about it, if I'd have planned it, I probably never would have got started. I remember someone asked me, what do you wish you'd have known about business before you started? Well, I'm glad I didn't know because I don't know if I would have started if that makes sense. So the same thing applies to, to dating is taking action is better than not taking action. You know, a lot of people don't do what they need to do they overthink it I, I see a lot of men really stuck in their head thinking 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 not acting you're actually better off acting and then working out what works what doesn't um and growing through that I mean I love the story of Michael Jordan you know when he says he missed 9,000 shots and at, 
lost how many games? Now, the average person would give up with that, but instead of giving up, you're going, okay, what works? What doesn't? How do I make the right shot? So having that resilience to go just because something fails, you're not a failure. So it's learning what works. Absolutely. And that really... Um, you know, includes a lot of self-love and compassionate um, way mm-hmm. of dealing with yourself. Because with men, I think when they fail at something, they really take it to heart. And mm-hmm. that sort of rejection that comes with uh, dating and being um, somebody who's wanted by, you know, another person uh, to share experiences can actually have devastating and, you know, lifelong uh, traumas to a lot of people. Now, in your work, you often talk about the importance of self-love and acceptance, yeah. right? How do these qualities then contribute to a person's ability to attract and maintain a healthy relationship? Well, I think the most important relationship any of us have is with ourselves, right? And it, what, however you treat yourself and feel about yourself, is reflected in your relationship. So if we're looking for love and acceptance from everyone else, it's a recipe for disaster. So, you know, when you start with having that love and compassion, you're actually able to love someone else. So I think everything starts with us and it's very easy to put the problem out there outside of ourselves. But if it if it starts here, and, and I do see you're right, men are especially hard on themselves more so than women. And, you know, in what I've done, I I see plenty of men in their 50s that have never got past a failed relationship and are desperately unhappy. And it really doesn't have to be that way. And I think that, you know, it's very attractive when you meet someone that's at peace with themselves and is happy within themselves, because that is what creates a good relationship. Absolutely. You've travelled to many places around the world and I'm assuming you've also come across uh, what are called initiation experiences where, you know, men of a certain age or women of a certain age are sort of um, given a rite of passage into life and they're given an opportunity to then go ahead and lead either their families or become somebody different. Could you think, do you think that maybe instances like that can actually then really change somebody's mindset because if they have not been given that opportunity to you know transition from being a kid to an adult that's why we've got fully grown babies out there that you know just look at rejection and want to just curl up into fetal position do you think that that can actually be of help yeah yeah absolutely Absolutely. I haven't really gone down into that path, but I I feel like for men, they don't have as much of a community or the support. And I, I women tend to have that and men don't. And that is often what's lacking, that sense of identity and purpose and which changes everything. Absolutely. Now, would you have maybe some practical steps for those that are not going to go into an initiation process that you could maybe recommend to someone who wants to cultivate that self-love or acceptance in their life so they can actually start, first of all, like you say, have a perfect relationship with themselves and also then pass on that um, relationship with other people in their in their life? Mm-hmm. Do you know, I, I think a lot of how we feel about ourselves comes to what we say to ourselves like the words we say in our head are really important and what what we focus on so I would tell someone to really notice what their self-talk is and people that are particularly judgmental of others are usually equally judgmental of themselves so interrupting the pattern and being kind to yourself and actually knowing that everyone comes with you know unconditional worth which sounds like a big concept right but we're all unique and celebrating what it is about yourself and really starting to like who you are is really important and it does start with that internal dialogue particularly Absolutely. And it all, all roads lead internally to the heart, really, from what I'm gathering yeah. from you. But um, it does seem, obviously, especially 
um, you know, for those that are in different uh, generations or age groups, like this time around, there's millennials, there's boomers, there's all these different uh, generations. And each and every one of these has presented, um, you know, different modalities uh, in, in dating. I think boomers would have maybe done, um, you know, maybe more face to face type of meeting people. And the millennials have devised ways to meet people predominantly online and the younger people don't even need to connect with anyone they just have to either swipe right or swipe left now a lot of people yeah. really get um uh, or feel overwhelmed and frustrated by maybe this whole modern dating scene what sort of advice do you um have for individuals who are struggling to navigate the complexities of dating and um, finding genuine connections yeah yeah, look, it's it's really interesting. We've got more ways to meet than we've ever had before. Yet people are more frustrated than they ever have been. Look, some of some of the whole how we communicate online, we can say stuff online that we would never say to people in a real life situation because there's no consequences, right? So, I people are really craving community a connection more so than they ever have before and, and look I I do recommend going you can still talk to people in the real world and people get scared of having those genuine conversations but and men go can I still approach women you absolutely can women want to be talked to by men but it's the way that approach happens right you know the guy that stares creepily without going and saying something is really not appealing. Um, so it comes back to those social skills. But I'm still a fan of online dating because if you want to go fishing, you go fish where the fish are and you're going to find a whole pile of singles on there and it all comes down to the approach that you take, right? So online is all about conversation again and a lot of people forget that, you know, you wouldn't walk up to a girl in a bar and say, hi, my name's Joe," and then walk away and give them the number. And guys often do that online. You want to build that, you know, lighthearted, fun, flirty conversation with someone or really connect with each other. And that gets you success. But people, I don't know, men tend to treat dating apps as transactional. You know, I just need to do this. We'll go on a date. They forget that people are looking for those genuine human connections with Absolutely. real conversations. Absolutely. I um I live just outside my street here and um there's always these young boys driving their fast cars or their latest uh, Mercedes and then they're sort of honking at girls that are walking on the sidewalk <laughs> and I'm just thinking to themselves, so what was that going to do? Was she going to uh, <laughs> follow you in your car or what was the actual um you know uh attention seeking uh cat call you just did over there but as a relationship expert I mean obviously these problems must have solutions and you sort of offer various online products uh one of which is how to love yourself um, how to find your best um, match and um, one that I think a lot of guys would like, uh, what women want. Um, could, you, <laughs> could you tell us a little bit more about these products and how they help individuals on their journey towards um, finding love and uh, mm -hmm. building successful relationships and how people can actually get a hold of them? Yeah, absolutely. So what I found working with people for like, you know, it's been 11 years now, is there's common problems like, the how to love yourself is, like I said before, how you feel about yourself creates the life that you're going to live. So you want to start with yourself. So I, I kind of thought that that was the key and the foundation for for everyone. I personally love how to find your best match. So it's, it's a program that takes you through your mindset, how you think, how you choose people, you know, what there's research that says we become like the person we're in a relationship with, right? And, and they, you know, with the, some of the five people that we spend the most time with, no one more than a romantic relationship. So who you choose is who you're going to become. So we tend to leave that to chance. And and I, I think that's a terrible idea, right? You know, if you look at the language around love, we're crazy in love, we fall in love. 
I'd actually prefer to step into love with someone that I'm going to have a wonderful relationship with. So I created that for that. And then the program, What Women Want, what I find is men and women are equal, yet they think and com act completely different, right? And when you can understand that, it's a game changer, right? So we both want the same things. We both want that connection, but how we go about it tends to be a little bit different. So when you can understand, you can get the results you want. So they're all, you know, that I think they range from like $30 to 197 So they're really affordable. It's like having your own dating coach in your pocket. <laughs> and um, what did you ask me where you can find them? Oh, you can find them on my website, um, debbierivers.com.au. And I think, like I said, my mission and my passion is to help people get the relationship and the love they want. And I do see common things that get in the way for, for people and I want to help them do it, you know, like for the guys in the what women want is what confidence means, why are nice guys finish last and et cetera. <laughs> Fantastic. And I'll make sure that all those uh, links are in our show notes just so that people can get a hold of them uh, and start their journey. Now, Debbie, obviously, you know, in life, <laughs> you will come across skeptics and especially the guy who's watching on YouTube right now is just thinking, nah, I've tried everything. I've been on the bar <laughs> scene. I've been on the yachts. I've got everything that any woman would need. Why won't anybody date me what sort of advice do you give to people that are sort of like okay giving up and then they just vowing to uh, live a life of being single just because obviously it's possible mm -hmm. these days. yeah you know I find for a lot of guys they'll watch YouTube stuff like there's a lot of dating advice out there and I sometimes think dating advice doesn't work and <laughs> which is funny because I give a lot of it but what it is is you can listen to dating advice you can be aware of what your issues are you can watch stuff but the only way you're going to change it is by taking the right action right the only way you get better at running is to run you can't be aware of running you can't watch running you have to run you have to get out there and take some action and I hate running so if I was to run I'd be out of breath really quickly but I could build up my skill by running a bit extra each day. But sometimes you're not aware of what you're not aware. You know, we're not aware of our own blind spots, are we? So when I've run events, I've even coached people and then I've seen what they've done at an event and I can see why they're not successful and they can't see it. So sometimes we can't see what's getting in the way of our success. And I think that we invest more money and so many other things yet our relationships are the things that really make us happy when people are on their deathbed they the thing that they you know are upset about is they didn't have the relationships that they wanted and I, I'm not sure if you've seen the research like they did a big study of 309,000 people and they found that the lack of strong relationships had the same risk on health as smoking 15 cigarettes a day we all know smoking's bad for us, right? But if we don't have relationships, and it doesn't have to be a romantic one, it can be strong friendships, it can be family, right? But we're not meant to do life alone. You know, you're not meant to be out there all lonely and it has a big impact on your health. And like I said, it doesn't have to be that way. So if you want to be successful in life, your relationships help you do that. And, you know, I think it's the last place people really invest money in until it's really bad. And, you know, we're all meant to be successful. We're not meant to die alone with cats. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, Unless I, I, you like cats. Unless... <laughs> I visually believe <laughs> that as societal beings, we are wired for a connection and obviously from that connection then comes procreation and uh, i think it's inherently wired inside of us so much that we can't delete that genetic code and even though the modern society tries to make 
um, you know, simulations of right now I'm talking to you, but it would have been a whole better experience if we were, um, you know, face to face. I could see your expressions and I could really see your body language and your mannerisms and everything else, you know, um, and, and, and that. I think our brains crave for that. So I can imagine if your brain is going to be working overload to try and find those instances. And if it doesn't, then it obviously starts degenerating. And that's where the 15 cigarettes sort of, you know, yeah. metaphor comes into play. So kudos to you yeah. for seeing that and doing your part in saving humanity. Um, and, um, you know, from self imploding itself. I mean, this day's AI is coming. Yeah, AI, yeah. <laughs> Now, <laughs> speaking of that, my last question to you there, Debbie, is you've you've done the, you know, you've done the whole relationship and uh, you won the medal and, and now you're teaching <laughs> other people how to uh, get around to, you know, having happier relationships with those that are around us. What can we expect from um, Debbie in the future? Or if you've got any sort of, uh, you know, trends that you see the dating scene happening that your business is probably going to be latching onto? So there really is a big need for community out there. That That is a huge trend. And, yeah, I, I suppose for me what I want to do is I want to play a bigger role and influence more people and to a wider audience to create the change because a lot of people don't know what they don't know, right? Um, you know what's interesting is I, I was just contacted for a comment that they actually say that Gen Zs are having less sex than any other generation so far. And so there's a few reasons why, right? They crave deeper connections and community more so than any other generation. They don't want superficial, casual, and maybe they've seen the cost on previous generations. They're more educated on mental health, but they're also more socially awkward than any other generation because they're the first generation to grow up totally with tech and you know, face-to-face -face interactions don't come as naturally and they are doing things a lot later than any other generation, like they're staying at home with parents longer, they're doing, you know, milestones are later where you know, people might have got married at seven years later, careers, everything is pushed back. So, you know, they're a very different generation and, you know, AI is going to change things totally. I mean, AI scares me a bit. I mean, it's amazing what it can do, but I think ultimately what it's going to do is very scary. Absolutely. And I, I concur with you there. Being in the digital space, there's so many changes that are happening in this space alone. We literally have to run 100 kilometers an hour just to stand still. And uh, with the advent of either AI or VR, I don't know if you've seen the latest uh, yeah. Apple goggles yeah. that literally make you immerse into your whole world. And I think we're going to be so <laughs> taken out because if the phone, which is not immersive, yeah. has separated a lot more people can you imagine a whole world where you can't even see um you know your surroundings and things of that nature yeah. but there's people like yourself to bring people back into reality and to show them uh what life yeah. is supposed to be not Debbie, I really appreciate your time uh, and patience on the call today. Um, you <laughs> no know, <problem. laughs> and just before, before we end, though, I think that um, I I went to a dating conference where a guy had never had a real life girlfriend. He was dating a girl in virtual reality for a couple of years that he never met. Was developing the tech, and even when it came to sex, they're developing sensors that you will have sex in a virtual world. I think that's a sad reality that is just uh, awful. <laughs> it's it's so much happening these days that it's I think it's a big, big 
wake up call for those that can help the situation to save <laughs> humanity because yeah. if we can't do that then obviously future generations are not going to have a a platform or they're not going to have models or role models mm -hmm. to learn from and things of that nature so i really appreciate your uh time with us on the call today all right now, that brings us to the end of today's episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And I really want to extend my heartfelt gratitude to our guest, Debbie, for sharing with us her valuable insights and expertise as a relationship expert. And Debbie, as we have noticed your value and your passion to empower individuals to find success in love and relationships is truly inspiring. And as you say, there's people that are going on and on their lives without even having physical human connection. I hope, um, you know, your work and your courses and your content will uh, bridge that gap that people so need because at heart we are societal human beings and for those that are watching uh right now thank you so much uh for tuning in i really hope you found today's conversation enlightening and filled with practical advice that you can apply in your own lives remember it's never too late to have the life that you've imagined and debbie's here to guide you on that journey till next time thank you so much for tuning into the online prosperity show bye for now